I don't want to lie to you. Italians never have a savory breakfast. Hello, everyone. This is Bars, and today we are plunging together into the sweet, sweet world of Italian breakfast. And when I say sweet, I do mean it, because Italian breakfast is definitely a sweet one. All of the most typical and most common options include lots of sugars, cakes, pastries, fruit. Even though on a day-to-day -day basis we usually have a lighter and quick and low-profile breakfast, I would say. At least that's what I do. Like every day I have a sliced apple with some cinnamon on top, a handful of almonds, a couple cookies. Oh my god, it's so hard for me to say cookies because my brain desperately wants me to say biscuits because in Italian it's biscotti, so biscuits, biscotti. Uh. And of course I have my cup of super hot cappuccino as well. I love cappuccino. I would have cappuccino literally all day, every day. What about you guys? Are you cappuccino lovers or are you more like tea fans? Let me know. Anyway, even though on a day-to-day -day basis we tend to have a lighter breakfast when we really want to kick off our day Italian style, what we usually do is we have breakfast al bar, at a cafe. Because there we can choose among some of the most popular Italian specialties. Well, some of them are local products, so recipes that you can find maybe just in that specific region, but some others are the real gems of Italian culture, I would say. They're the symbol of Italian breakfast. You can find them everywhere. You can find them disposed at the counter of every single cafe. Let me tell you more. An Italian cafe cannot be called one if they don't have them in their menus. So what am I talking about? The top three precious gems of Italian breakfast are il cornetto, i biscotti occhio di bue, il ciambellone. And today, I'm gonna show you how to make them at home. All right, so I wanna start with cornetto, not only because this recipe is gonna take a little bit longer than the others, but also because cornetto is like the epitome of Italian breakfast. Per me è un cappuccino e un cornetto, grazie. Mi fa un cornetto e un caffè, per favore? You won't hear nothing but those two combinations at a cafe in the morning. And that's usually what you find written outside of every single cafe too. No matter if you're in a big city or in a smaller city or if you're in a little town. Of course there are many different types of cornetto and also you can choose among many different types of fillings. But my favorite is cornetto integrale al miele. So that's what we're gonna make today. In my head this recipe is divided into three steps. So, let's begin with the first one. In our first bowl, we have both wheat and whole wheat flour. And we start by adding a bag of yeast and two teaspoons of brown sugar to that. We mix it up a little and then we move on to our next bowl. We need to melt a tablespoon of honey and the rest of our brown sugar in 250 grams of water. So make sure it's warm before you begin with this step. Next, we add some lemon zest, don't look at me, I'm not using the right tool, and some melted butter. We keep going and then we add one egg as well. When we see it's somehow well mixed, we start incorporating. Can I say that? Well, anyway, we start adding the flour and everything that's in the other bowl, a few tablespoons. At some point, this mixture will start turning into an actual dough. So when we feel that the texture is almost there, we go grab some more flour and we let the magic happen. When you knead the dough, don't be afraid of adding more and more flour and quote unquote, wash your hands with flour as well, because that's the only way to keep it from becoming too sticky. Do you see how it turned out into that little ball all by itself? That's our cue to move on to the next part of the recipe, which is let the dough rise. So we put the dough in our usual bowl, and we add some more flour but on top, and we cover it up with some cling film. Okay, so right now we 
we need to let it rise for a couple hours, I would say. So, why don't we take this opportunity to start with our biscotti occhio di bue? First of all, I need to tell you guys the literal translation of occhio di bue technically is bull's eye. But we never mean it that way. Like, that's not what we mean when we use this expression. The expression occhio di bue stands for sunny side up egg, and we also call these biscuit, no, cookies, this way, because their shape kind of reminds you of the shape of an egg that's cooked that way, because they're made with two layers of pasta frolla. Pasta frolla, I believe, is short crust pastry. So they are made with two layers of that and they have a little spot of apricot jam right in the middle. So they kind of look like an egg, right? They're so cute. We crack two eggs in a bowl. Oh, I wish I could do that like a pro and crack those two at once, but I just can't. We add some lemon zest, our brown sugar as well, and we thoroughly mix everything together until we see that the grains of sugar are somehow melted. We add the baking powder and then the oil. I'm replacing butter with seed oil in this recipe first because I don't always like the aftertaste of butter, but also because then we can use this raw pasta frolla immediately without waiting for it to sit in the fridge. We go on with our flour and we add just a few tablespoons of it at a time so that we can combine it carefully. Okay, from now on, make sure you have your flour within reach because we're gonna need to add more of it both when we knead the pastry and when we roll it out. Let's get to work then! Yeah, I'd say that will do. Now it's smooth and not too sticky, so we can move on to the next step. But first, let me tidy it up and clean the table. All right, we take a piece of baking paper, we put some flour on it and on our mattarello as well, and we start rolling out the pastry. Again, flour is an ally here, so add a handful of it every time you see that the pastry gets more sticky. When we get to the point where our layer of pasta frolla is like a few millimeters thin, we go grab our round cookie cutters. I didn't have proper ones, so I used a cup and a bottle cap that we're gonna need later. Let's cut our cookies, then remove the excess parts, put them in a bowl, and when we're done, we move our raw cookies on a baking tray. Then we go on like this until there's no pastry left and almost no excess parts. We clean the table again, and then with our bottle cap slash cookie cutter, we cut a little hole in the center just on half of the cookies. Ideally, the thinner ones, because that's the layer we're gonna put on top. The last time I was in Padova, I found out this super nice place that had a lot of uh, pastries and goodies and stuff, and it's a uh, window, is that called it that way? Well, there were the tiniest occhi di bue I've ever seen. They were so pretty and beautiful. They looked like flowers. After 15, maybe 20 minutes in the oven, 180 degrees, the cookies will look like this. Dear apricot gem, it's your turn. First, we put a good amount right in the center and then we carefully spread it all around. We put the other layer on top and look at that! Our sunny side up shape is right there! Powder sugar on top as our last step and guys, it's got the occhio di bue just for you. Not too bad, huh? Well, two hours have now gone by, so let's go back to our cornetti. Here we go! That's the setting for our second step and you guys, I had a wonderful clip to show you how the dough got huge inside the bowl, but Somehow, I don't know, I lost it. Well, I hope this shot can do it justice, but yes, it definitely worked. Right now, we have to roll out the dough again and create a sort of little loaf so we can cut eight, Italian word here, eight panetti that have almost, almost the same size. All right, let me explain. We're going to replicate the same technique that's used for puff pastry, even though this is not puff pastry. Let's say it's a 
quick homemade version of that, so it's gonna taste a little different, but still delicious. As you can see, the technique consists in rolling out one panetto until it's very thin, then brushing it with butter, sprinkling with brown sugar, and then putting another layer on top. So we have to go on like this until our sweet sandwich is completed. Then we adjust the shape and roll it out a little bit more with our mattarello. Last but not least, we cut eight slices, just as if it was a cake. And we make that little cut as well because that's gonna help us create the typical cornetto shape that's like half moon style. Check it out. needed another cooking tray because guys those cornetti are going to rise again and get even bigger so when we're done we let them sit there for about 20 minutes okay while we were waiting for those 20 minutes to go by I'd say we can focus on our last recipe which is our fantastic ciambellone Ciambellone is one of the easiest cakes to make and by far one of my favorites as well. Before you begin, make sure you have something similar to a bond pan. <laughs> anyway, make sure you have something similar to this pan with you so that you can reproduce the typical shape with the hole right in the middle. Non tutte le ciambelle escono col buco, ma questa sì. <laughs> Sugar is already in the bowl, so we crack two eggs on top of it. Then we grab our electric beater. Well, that's right. And we keep going until the eggs and sugar turn into a sort of cream, a super fluffy cream. We add half of the flour and we gently mix it. Then we add the oil and the water, and again, we end with the rest of our flour. Now we just need to smash to melt a little piece of butter in the pan and we need to put some flour as well because not only will the cake rise better but it also will be easier for us to remove it from the pan. Baking soda plus lemon juice equals baking powder in a way so we do it as our last step. We put just half of the batter in the pan and to the other half we add two tablespoons of cocoa powder so it will be a two-color chambellone. Okay, so now the cake will stay in the oven for about 30, 40 minutes, 180 degrees. But make sure you're not putting the pan on the cooking tray because we need the grill this time. Look at that! Powder sugar on top, and here's your chambellone. That's the best. Can we make these cleaves last longer? And without further ado, guys, welcome to step number three. We crack one egg, separate the yolk from the white, and then we brush our now fully risen cornetti with the yolk. I hope I'm pronouncing yolk in the right way. Anyway, after that, well, we're good to go. We put those babies in the oven for about 20 minutes, 170 degrees, and voila! If you want, you can also brush them with a few tablespoons of hot honey just to make them look more shiny. Ladies and gentlemen, i cornetti. Italian classics for the next days. 
However, I don't want any of this to go wasted, so later today I'll put everything in the freezer so that it will definitely last longer. Of course, I'll cut the chambolone into single slices first. And then, every night I'll choose what breakfast to eat the next day, I'll pick one, I'll let it defrost overnight, and the next morning, boom! Italian breakfast of my choosing, just like at the coffee shop, but homemade, right in my kitchen, brightening up my day. So guys, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this sweet, sugary journey into the Italian breakfast. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!